Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the Knitting Pickle podcast. My name is Laura Penrose, I'm a knitwear designer and content creator and I'm here with a traditional format podcast for you. I say episode 33, it feels like episode 36 because this is the third time I have filmed this. <laughs> the first time round we had awful lighting, second time round we had awful uh, sound, so I'm hoping we've managed to hit the nail on the head today. The lighting is very cool but it's February, that's not something that I can help. I'm hoping I can warm it up a little post filming, we'll see, but I'm going to stop worrying about that and just get on with it because I've got so much to show you. I've got, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight projects. Nine, nine projects. <laughs> to show you and that is five finished objects and four whips um oh no ten <laughs> i've technically got 11 projects but one of them i haven't got here to show you um, so yeah i've got a lot to share it's been a long time since i've done a podcast my last podcast was just before vlogmas at the very end of november um so yeah there's a lot to catch you up on and obviously i've like built on every time I've had a failed recording I've then made another thing which I've now got to show you so it's just going to be finished objects and whips today <laughs> just knitting maybe a tiny hint of crochet but I'm not going to be doing any acquisitions I'm not going to be doing any other bits like that because I've this is going to be a big one and I'm looking forward to kind of really getting in into these projects and catching up with you guys properly but before we get into the projects I do have one special little thing to announce and it's taken me ages to get around to this um but in December during vlogmas I hit 20,000 subscribers here on YouTube which is really exciting I as a general rule don't try and pay attention to numbers likes follows that kind of thing because it's really bad for my mental health personally however I don't want to let this one go by because it's a big one 20k is absolutely huge and um I, I want to note it and celebrate it and pat myself on the back and do a little something for you guys as well I don't do giveaways on this channel but I do have the um, ability to give something to all of you kind of if you want it I'm going to give you a big fat discount on my patterns so I if this is your first time watching I've got quite the library of patterns now we've got everything garments blankets socks homeware accessories everything and they are all going to be 20% off for two weeks from this video going live I don't know exactly what day that it will go live when I'm filming but from the day this goes live two weeks you can get 20% off all of my patterns and that is on Ravelry and my website which will all be linked below and all you need to do is use the code 20k as a thank you for being here and subscribing. I'm not going to dwell on it for too long because uh, like I said we've got a lot to talk about and you might be able to hear in the background my children are home. It is half term. Oh that was a big change in lighting wasn't it? There you go that's that's what happens this time of year. We've gone behind a cloud. Yes, darling. Oh, that's see, there we go. That's perfect lighting. Look at that. Um, it's half term and I wasn't planning on filming today. Um, we were going to go do the food shop and go to the cafe, maybe go to the park for a little while. But both my kids are feeling a bit under the weather. So we're just chilling out today. They're in the living room. My floor, my house is all on one level, so don't worry, they're not downstairs, I'm not upstairs. I can hear everything that they're doing. They're literally right over there. <laughs> So everyone's good and safe, um, but we may be interrupted once or twice, you never know. But that's enough rambling, let's crack on, shall we? <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to talk about today is what I am wearing, and it is my latest finished object as well. Uh, this was a completely random cast on last week, purely just for the sake of it. I'm not intending to write it up as a pattern. I've got no intention to do anything with it whatsoever. It was just a fun 
project for me. I've got a lot of big work projects on at the moment and I just need to make sure I've got something that's, that's just for me on, on the go, just pure pleasure, not work. And I had an idea of this particular yarn combination for quite a while and then I just felt the urge to cast it on the other day. So I'm wearing a plain drop shoulder oversized sweater. That's literally it. <laughs> I didn't follow a pattern. I self-drafted it. I based the dimensions on my sibling sweater, my size. So if you like the fit of this, you could go and um, do the sibling sweater, my size. So that is DK weight. This is knit on eight millimeter needles. So it's big, it's chunky boy. However, it is really, really light. I was basically heavily inspired by the marble sweater by Petite Knit, but didn't want a raglan and I didn't want 10 millimeter needles. That's a step too far for me. Eight is about my limit and I can knit that comfortably without my hands hurting. And it's super fast, super quick, smashes through the yarn and that's just what I wanted. But I didn't want a raglan, I wanted a drop shoulder. So I just did kind of a basic drop shoulder construction. I did short rows for the back panel and then picked up, and this is probably the one thing that like, is it's probably the worst, well it's not the worst, it's not even bad, but it's the one little bit about this that I wasn't quite happy with. And I think it's just my yarn choice just doesn't lend itself well to having short rows right along the pickup bit. It's left some quite big Kind of holes i mean there's nothing wrong with it i've not done anything incorrectly it's all fine it's just i think the loose gauge the light yarn the big needles didn't quite work so if you were to draft your own drop shoulder i wouldn't recommend doing short rows i would do increases like um, in my sibling sweater thing i'd just, just have like a little band and you increase and yeah i'm not going to go into it but i'd probably change that but other than that i love everything about this jumper i have worn it a lot since I finished it. I mean, I only finished it a few days ago, but I wore it all day yesterday from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed, even whilst I had a nap. And it's just, it's like I, every time I get maximum cozy feelings, I don't feel like I can surpass it, but this is just like a hug in a jumper. I love it. What yarn did I use? So I used one strand of Cos by Sanders Garn in like a beige color, um, which is around an Aran weight. I used two strands of mohair, Knitting for Olive in Ballerina, so ever so slightly pink. It's not like only just pink, but still pink. And obviously the lighting today is gonna do any of the colors justice, but it just, just only just gives pink. Like it's not quite like a pink jumper. It's still in that beige level, but it's kind of got that vibe to it. And then I used one strand of fingering weight hand dyed merino sock yarn, which is where the kind of very gentle speckle is coming from. The beige and the mohair and the white base create a marl, but it's so, so subtle. And you just get the little speckles like popping through. I'll give you a close up of my sleeve so you can really see what we're talking about. I just love it, I just love it. I'm really, really pleased that this worked out in the end. Um, I have used, I used just under seven balls of mohair. So if you're holding that single, that's probably like three and a half, four balls of mohair tops for this kind of size. And they are 225 meters each. So 800 meters per strand I used for this roughly. And to make sure that I was gonna have enough, I had a quick look at the yardages for the um, marble sweater by Patina, just to kind of get a rough area as to where I needed to be. And I did need to order some more mohair, but everything else I had more than enough of. So it was less than 200 grams of the fingering. I don't know how much of the cost I used because I'd ripped it out of an old project. So I didn't have it in balls and I didn't weigh it before. So couldn't really be bothered. Um, but yeah, I basically smashed out loads of my stash. Just like two random skeins left over, some mohair that I didn't know what to do with, and a sweater quantity that I had used many different times. It started as a dress by Augustine's, and then it became a September sweater that I never finished because it just looked awful. Um, and finally, it's this. So I'm glad that it's out of stash. I went for super long sleeves with a nice is it a two inch cuff and I did decrease gently. I thought my sleeves were too long at first when I first, fin when I first finished the sleeves, 
but I'm actually really happy with the length. They are so cozy. I love nothing more than to be like this. However, if I need to do stuff, I've just been folding them back. And I th also think it looks really cute folded back. And I think that works because we've got the folded neckband. I did a couple of rows of double knit, um, which again, I learned from petite knit basically, but it gives a nice crisp fold, but without having a pearl row there. So it's really, really nice. I did put some elastic in here just to strengthen the collar a little bit but I picked up and added the collar afterwards so that makes it strong. One change I might make in the collar actually is I might have just increased maybe a little bit more because my front section here is quite long and without the elastic it was looking a bit square so I probably would have increased maybe once more twice more it's so tricky at this big chunky gauge because like one increase can make a big difference. I've got three stitches per inch so yeah a couple of stitches can make a big difference to fit um other features that i've done i'm gonna have to go up on my knees i put in a faux seam along the sides right here hopefully you can see it it's just along here i think we might have to do some b-roll for this the reason I put a faux seam in is because it's this very light, floaty, poofy fabric. It can be a bit cylindrical, like in a body and not have much shape. So I put the faux seam in just by slipping two stitches every other row and knitting them. Knitting them one row, slipping them in the next row with the yarn in the back. Um, just to give this kind of faux seam and it gives a little bit of structure and I think it worked really, really well. And then finally I did a split hem. I'm not gonna to attempt to show you that by kneeling on my bed. We're gonna, we're gonna to have to have some B-roll for this one. Sorry, future editing Laura. Um, but I did um, two inches of rib at the front and then three inches at the back. And I do wish I'd made the front ribbing a little bit longer because it kind of like rounds out a little bit. And I find that when ribbing isn't long enough on a garment, it kind of, bends a little bit so I do wish I'd made that front a bit longer I don't think I'm going to go back and adjust it only because I haven't fully wet blocked this yet and I think if I wet blocked it I could manipulate my ribbing to be a little bit longer so that it doesn't bow quite so much I also might see if I can block a little bit more width to it because it is I wanted it to be wider than my hips it is hip length i wanted it long enough to cover most of my bum so i can work with leggings wearing it with brown leggings today and it's giving me this like uh, ice cream vibe like pink and brown like pinky white and brown like i love that combination it just makes me think of ice cream and it's great um but i wanted it just to cover most of my bum so i felt confident wearing it in leggings and it sits on my hips like just right and i would have liked maybe just two inches more so it skimmed my hips a little bit more so but it's not so much that's gonna bother me and again i haven't fully wet blocked it i've only steam blocked it so i think i could get a little bit more width out of it though that would risk losing a bit of length so we'll see i'll probably just wear it a few times see what it relaxes to see if it's actually a problem or if i'm just making it up in my brain i wore it with jeans yesterday and felt really good in it really confident and it's just the craziest thing in the world so there you go that is my self-drafted cozy sweater you could also get a very similar look to this with the dartmoor by kadri which is i believe i test knit that i think i did mine on five millimeter needles or maybe 5.5 so that's a chunkier gauge but not quite chunky chunky but you get a very similar look drop shoulder the shoulder construction is beautiful and yeah if this is a kind of vibe you like i'd probably go for the dartmoor by kadri so that's what I'm wearing. I'm already getting quite warm. <laughs> Finished objects. I'm going to go in order of finishing them because there's quite a lot here. And I've got quite a lot to say. <laughs> I'm going to start with my first shawl. Um, not my first shawl ever. My first shawl. My first shawl for me. I have knit shawls for other people. I've made the Humbly Bee. I've made... Um, a West Knits shawlography for my grandma, which I loved, and I did another garter one for my grandma, and I can't remember the design, I think it was called Rolling Hills. So I have made shawls, but only ever for other people. And 
I decided this year it was finally time to make a shawl for myself. If you joined me for Vlogmas, you will know what I'm talking about because this was my advent project. I had the Fibre Fox advent calendar, which was a fade and it was called Golden Hour. I paid for it myself. Um, I had two advent calendars actually. I also had the Botanical Yarn, which is going into another project, which you'll see later. And again, paid for them myself. Wasn't gifted anything in case anyone out there was wondering. <laughs> And I have finished my shawl. I didn't finish it in December. I wasn't trying to get through a skein a day by any means. Um, but once Vlogmas was over, I f just fully just went straight into this project and couldn't put it down. I enjoyed every single moment of it. If you had told me not too long ago that I would be making a massive fingering weight, faded shawl and loving it, I would have told you to absolutely jog on. <laughs> But it, it was just exactly what I needed. It was mindless, it was enjoyable, it was constantly changing. I think the thing that's put, put me off about shawls in the past is just it's just one piece of fabric and I thought it'd be really repetitive and really, really boring. But I think the fact that I was fading yarns is what kept me going on this project. And without further ado, I'm gonna try my best to show you and it's huge, it's absolutely huge. <laughs> so this is just half of it. You can see the central spine here, how far out it goes, and you can see, I'm just peeping out, peeping out down here, hi. You can see, just, Mommy. yes darling. You can see just how gorgeous it is. So this is the What The Fade by Andrea Mowry, kind of. <laughs> Originally, um, it's two color brioche, so you kind of get a different look on either side. And I started with a two color brioche, but quickly realized that wasn't gonna work because in the original pattern, there's only six colors and I had 24. And I got a message from Georgie who dyed the yarn saying, switch to one color brioche, it'll work much better for the advent. And I'm really glad I took her advice. So around here, I switched to one color, but I used the two color brioche fading instructions to fade from one color to another until I got to around here, I think, where I started changing things up. Um, I basically went rogue from that point on. I did the brioche for as long as it says in the pattern. I wish I'd gone a little bit further with the brioche just because um, I ended up making my shawl quite a bit bigger than the original pattern, so it would have been a bit more evenly balanced, I think. But overall, that doesn't really matter. This is what I'm discovering is the beauty of shawls. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be to pattern. You don't have to worry about fit. You don't even have to worry about how it looks really because it gets wrapped up around you. And that is so freeing. When, it, when your job is precision, you, when you're writing patterns, everything has to be spot on and perfect and precise and exact. This is just freedom. <laughs> and I think maybe that's why I've been so into the shawl knitting, the blanket knitting, the kind of non-garment things recently because it's been a garment heavy few years. So I think that's probably another reason why I enjoyed this so much. Um, by the time I got a little bit the way through the garter section, I was at the point where I was fading from one color to the other and then directly into the next. There was no gap in between. My rows were getting so long. And when it came to the garter section, I did a similar thing to the brioche. I didn't follow the striping, like fading techniques from the pattern. I instead would kind of do two color brioche but with garter that made sense so instead of working all the way across and all the way back to make a garter bump I would knit all the way across in one colour then purl all the way across in a new colour um no <laughs> I this is gonna be really difficult to explain um but instead of having like a full two rows and striping that way to create the fade so two rows to create one pearl bump I would break down those two rows into single rows so I would work across in my new colour and then I would purl across in my previous colour knit purl back in my previous colour and then knit back in my new colour so instead of it being two rows of a single colour it was only one row and because we've got pearl bumps in there it blended those colours even more and because it's a 24 colour fade, you can see just how subtle the changes are. You don't see striping, it just happens and it's amazing. 
So I think by breaking those fades down even more, yes, it meant I had to do loads of purling. I think it was worth every single stitch because my fade is stunning. It's beautiful. There's not a single stripe in there and I'm so proud of myself. So yeah, it was definitely worth doing all that purling. Yes, darling. I can't get the tiny one. I tried using the fade and the red colour doesn't work. Prim dum dum, prim dum dum, prim dum dum. So there you go, that's my advent shawl. I absolutely loved it. I can definitely see myself doing this kind of project again with the fade, with the shawl, with the coziness, just, oh. And I've been wearing it a lot more than I thought I would as well. I've been wearing it a lot as a scarf, mainly as a scarf really, on those days where it's really, really chilly. And I'm, I was quite surprised at how warm it is actually, because I thought, well, it's super wash merino, it's fingering weight, it's not going to be that warm, I don't think, but it surprisingly is, especially when you're all bunched up like this. So yeah, I've mainly been wearing it as a scarf like this with a coat and also like as a, uh, as a shawl traditionally, but because it's so big, it kind of, it's not the most practical when I'm sitting down on the sofa if I am quite chilly then it's great because it it I can make it like cover my arms like whilst I'm knitting and it's not too big it's not too heavy and yeah I can go full shawl mode with this um but I do wear it more as a scarf and I really like it with um I've got like a pair of with like really wide leg jeans and like a long duster cardigan and I put this on and it gives me like 70s vibes like really like cool and like retro and I don't know if it's the colours or the outfit as a whole but yeah I absolutely love it. So that's my What the Fade shawl by Andrea Mowry. The original pattern had tassels but I just didn't didn't feel like it in the end. Oh also I I used my last colour for like two rows and then did the eye cord bind off but I was worried that I was going to run out so I did order a 50 gram skein of the final colour just in case. So that will be a nice little surprise at some point soon and I can make a pair of socks because <laughs> I only need 50 grams to make a pair of socks. Um, one final thing on this before we continue is I definitely made that mistake of doing my eye cord stitches too tightly and you can see that it curves quite significantly and that's because yeah these the eye cord stitch on the edge were just done too tightly but again it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't, it does not affect the shawl at all. It doesn't even do that big like curly round thing, we just get a bit of a kick at the end. Um, but that's definitely a lesson I learned from the shawl and something that I learned how to remedy later on, which I will show you. Um, so yeah, moving on, what was next? So we are sticking with shawls um, and I've got two here, however they are the same design, just slightly different. And if you follow me over on Instagram, you'll know about this design, hopefully. If you are not on Instagram, then this might be the first time you've seen it. Um, basically, I finished my What The Fade Shawl and I had a massive shawl shaped hole in my life and I absolutely missed working on it. And then my daughter discovered it and kept pinching it from me. I'd find her wrapped up in it in bed. <laughs> Obviously, I would remove it from her, but she just loved it. It's like a blanket for her, it's so big. Um, but she would also wear it like wrapped around her. She just loved the concept of a shawl. So I thought, do you know what? I've got to make this girl a shawl. So I cast on a dopamine knit. No plan, no thoughts, just what came to mind at the time, what I felt like doing. And I've come to learn that that is often how I produce my best work. <laughs> when I just go into it, not a thought, not a care, see what happens, enjoy myself, go with my gut. Like quite a few of my patterns have come come to life that way and they are my more um, popular patterns. That's how the Sweet Shop Blanket came into existence. It's how the Sibling Sweater, the original kids one, came into existence. And just following that dopamine results in really lovely things. I also at the time received a skein of yarn that I'd ordered in a December pre-order. It was a December exclusive colourway. And when it arrived, I just had to instantly use it. But I wasn't in the mood for socks. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll hold it double to make a DK weight and just see how far I can get with it. So that is how the Pimpom shawl was born. And here's version one 
don't take it all in just yet because there are changes <laughs> but this is the amazing yarn that i was talking about this is the colorway sugar frosting by james makes yarn he's on instagram as james makes things and he's one of my favorite instagram followers at the moment and just i mean come on come on it's just amazing it is every single color but without it looking muddy or murky or anything like that. It's literally got everything. Pink, yellow, teal, brown, purple. It's, oh, I can't, I can't talk about it enough. It's so wonderful. You cannot get this colorway anymore. However, he's currently got his Valentine's colorway up for pre-order, which is gorgeous and his easter colorway that he's working on i'm so so excited for if i thought this was penny in a yarn i was wrong his easter colorway is penelope in a yarn so i'm gonna get i think i'm probably gonna get a couple of skeins of that to make her something with it because it's just it's so easter it's fantastic so if you are a fan of the brightly colored exciting hand dyed yarns then please go check out james because his work is fantastic i absolutely love it and he's local to me he's a cotswolds person i don't live in the cotswolds i live right next to it so um i can kind of consider it local so yeah it's nice to have somebody close to me to support um, the bright hot pink on the end is fluoro pink by folkestone harbour yarns now james does have a very similar hot pink as well he also has like the yellow and the teal and the colors that are in this colorway so i think i could have chosen anything for this border but i had this in stash ready to use so that's what i thought i'd do so i started with just a really simple garter triangle it's all i wanted to do and i wanted to use as much of this skein as possible which I did, I only had a tiny little bit left um, and I managed to get to this size. So then I thought, well, what are we gonna do in that transition to a border color? I know, we'll do some bobbles, we'll do some pom-poms or pim-poms. <laughs> the reason it's called a pim-pom shawl is it is one of my many pet names for my daughter. <laughs> I won't go into why, but she's often called Pim Pom. And I thought it was the perfect name for this shawl because it was designed for her and the little bobbles do look like pom poms and it just it just felt right. So there you can go, you can see them running along there. So delicate, so cute. And then we've got the scallop edging, which is something I had in my mind pretty much from the beginning, but I didn't know how I was gonna make it work. And there are issues with this one. The main one being this in the middle. <laughs> at first, I was fine with it. I didn't think it looked that bad. Well, I didn't think it looked bad at all. I thought it looked fine. But then my daughter was wearing it and it just, it just looked like a little bum. <laughs> and I couldn't get past that thought in my head. As well as the fact that because they are made with short rows, they kind of naturally want to cup so not only did it resemble like a little bum this way it almost had like little peachy bum cheeks to it as well so i was like right okay this isn't right this needs to change we need to work on this <laughs> which don't worry i addressed the situation but i wasn't going to rip back and change this at all because it's, it's fine as it is and she doesn't care i don't care and i've made it very very clear in the pattern that this is not two pattern don't worry there's another sample so this is Penny's version and she loves it, I love it, she demands I bring it to school when I pick her up, I won't let her take it into school but she puts it on, she wraps it around her when she's cold, she cuddles it when she sleeps and yeah she absolutely loves it and it was such a pleasure to knit. I used 100 grams of this, less than 100 grams of this so it's such a brilliant little stash user and I mean it's child size but you could you could totally just, you know, as an adult, if you just wanted a little bit of something, something, you could totally wear it yourself. So that's the kids version. So once I'd done that, I was like, right, okay, I need one now. I need one to match. I want there to be an adult size. If I'm going to do this as a pattern, I want there to be, you know, both sizes available. But also in the pattern, it gives you everything you need to know about making your own size as well. I have like little modify sections in the pattern. So like when you get to the end of the main color, you can adjust your stitch count there and how many stitches you need for bubbles and how many stitches you need for scallops and all that kind of thing. And my testers have been doing an incredible job during this test knit. I'm gonna go on about them now. I was gonna wait till the end, but I need to do it now. They have been 
fantastic. I did a public test call for the first time in quite a while and I do have some, I don't want to say veterans because that makes them sound old. I have some tester regulars but I've had so many new people coming in and it's been fantastic fantastic the feedback that i've had the versions that have been made i'm absolutely blown away and the whole process has been a pleasure if you are, have been following me for a while you'll know that test knitting has been something i've really struggled with in the past i felt a lot of guilt over choosing testers i felt overwhelmed by the testing process itself but it's just been so nice it really has been lovely. I feel very, very, very lucky. And because I've written it to make the most of your skeins, we have had a few versions where they haven't, our testers haven't quite made it to the recommended numbers with their skein. So we've been working together to figure out how best to edit, what goes into the border and all this kind of stuff. So they've been instrumental in making this pattern really accessible. I'm so pleased. Um, I might do a little scroll through of um, the hashtag to show some of their versions. There's a stripy version, there's a single colour version, there are fluffy versions, there are faded versions, there are monochrome versions. It, oh, there's so many and they're beautiful. Every single one of them is gorgeous and I'm so pleased. So here's my second version. Again, all stash busting. And for this I used 200 grams of fingering weight held double. So I should probably say this is a DK weight shawl, but I use fingering held double. Uh, some people find it difficult to get their head around, but basically fingering weight is generally half the weight for the same yardage. So if you've got 100 grams of DK weight, that'll be roughly 200 meters. If you've got 100 grams of fingering weight, that will be roughly 400 meters so you hold the fingering weight double and you've got 200 meters because you're halving it because you're using two so that is why you can do two strands of fingering weight for dk weight now not every yarn is made equal and this is something that has really been highlighted in the test knit for me the yardage on this was 425 meters for 100 grams so i was able to get more rows than some of my testers who use yarns that were only 400 so I've written the pattern in a way hopefully that should mean you'll be able to use up your entire single skein of yarn or two skeins of yarn for your main section and then you can figure out your border numbers based on how far you get <laughs> I've still got a little bit of tweaking to do but I'm really really confident in this pattern I'm really pleased with it so I used Biff Sugar Yarns in the colour Winter Stroll, held double, and it's this really beautiful, subtle, gently speckled, light yarn. And I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but it's the yarn I used in this as well. <laughs> and isn't that interesting how different it looks? Held single with a load of fluff, held double on its own. It's cool, isn't it? I basically bought four skeins of this intending to hold it with mohair and make a garment, but I just couldn't get myself past the potential pooling. So I thought, screw it. I'm gonna use it here where the pooling doesn't matter. And it didn't even pool. It looks stunning. I used two separate skeins held together rather than one skein held double. I used the two separate skeins so it's all even. And yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. And then the border I used I can never remember which way around it is. Olive, uh, Olive, o Olivia and Oliver fibres, I think. Did I get it right? Olivia and Oliver fibres. This is actually a worsted weight yarn, but meterage wise, it, to me, it kind of still fell in the same kind of DK range that we were working with here. And I think this is a little bit thicker than this, but it's a shawl. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. Why not mix your weights up a little bit? It actually worked really, really well. And this is the shade Pumpkin Spice, which I think is a regular of hers. And it's so beautiful. It's tonal, kind of not speckled, but got different elements to it. And it's just beautiful. And they go together so nicely. They were just the perfect match. And again, I had this in stash. I had three skeins of this. I was originally gonna make like a neck collar thing with it, but I just never got around to it. So I thought, let's just use it for this. So I've got plenty. I know I'm not gonna run out. And with the leftover yarn that I've got, I think I had about 150 grams left. I'm currently making a hat. I don't have it with me because it's in my husband's car and he's at work. Um, so I will show you that next time. But it's just, yeah, 
beautiful and so you can see now how I have changed things up with the scallop edging so the main difference is here in the middle I got rid of the bum and kind of made this central scallop which is slightly different shape um, but there was no other way around it really I tried lots of different things for this lots of different methods and this is what I settled on I think it looks really really nice I think it looks like shell like almost like scallopy shell and that also meant that the wing tip is slightly different as well so as you can see it really extends out here whereas with this one it kind of curved around which again I don't mind I think they are both lovely but I ended up going with this because it just made the most sense in the end and it worked better for my grading so this is the adult version of the pimp pom shawl and I, I've been wearing this a lot actually. It's not as big as my What The Fade. That was intentional. I wanted something in between, something that would sit on my shoulders a little bit more practically, a little bit more easily. But because it's DK weight, it's nice and warm. And it just sits, it's just perfect. It just sits there like brilliantly. And I tend to keep this on my sofa just so I can grab it when I want it. But I have also been wearing it a lot as a scarf. I have got a camel wool coat, so it's perfect with my camel coat. And I love how when you wear it forwards, you can really kind of let that border like shine. I've got a picture of it where it's kind of all the way across there and you can see the lovely scallops. And it's just really, really beautiful i love how it can be quite simple when it's like this it just looks quite plain and yes you've got a little bit of a bobble moment and you kind of get the two colors and it's quite simple and classic and doesn't like fight with anything else but then when you open it up and you wear it as a shawl you get that full effect of the scallop border and the bobbles and the just the loveliness of it so yeah that's my pim pom shawl it's my latest design Completely randomly, didn't think I'd be designing any shawls this year, but there you are. We are nearly at the end of the test. The test is, finishes on the 27th of February, and I think the pattern's going to be released very, very shortly after that. It's, I think we've worked out all the tweaks now, so I just need to make that final document and get that um, signed off by my editor. Um, so yeah, hopefully it will be ready by the end of February, if not early March, I'm not too sure which, but yeah, it will be ready super, super soon. So that's the pimp pom. Right, my last finished object. I'm not going to go into this too deeply because you may or may not have seen my last video focused on this project completely. A week in the life of the Midland cardigan. And yeah, there's a lot of detail in that video. So if you are interested in this project, I'd recommend going to watch that video. But I am going to show you now because I want to let you know about the changes that I'm going to make because I've worn it a few times now and yeah we need to change it we need to rip most of it back <laughs> i'm just gonna swap around so this is my absolutely mahusive midland cardigan this is is a design i made this time last year actually i started working on it it was the end of february last year and I have a sample of it already in like a green colour and it is a, it's the appropriate size. This, however, ended up being two sizes too big because I didn't check my numbers correctly when choosing a size and I didn't realise until I was most of the way through the body. And by that point, I just didn't want to give up. So I just carried on regardless. <laughs> I then also realised since that the grading of my sleeves is not very good <laughs> they are too long they are too wide even for someone who this is more proportionally suited for this isn't right <laughs> so we need to do some changes of that um but since wearing it for a little while i quite like the oversizedness i like the different look to my original sample i love how cozy it is i love to wear it open However, I've realised that I, there is no way I can use this as a sample for my pattern because it's so far from what the actual pattern should be. And that's because of my sloppy work, basically. It's because I rushed it. It's because I, well, I did knit it in a week. Yes, I achieved that goal, but did I knit it well? No, no, I did not. <laughs> First of all, my ribbing is super loose and I'm not very happy with it. It doesn't cinch in at all, 
and it just looks a bit sloppy really and that's because I didn't go down enough needle sizes and it's the same with the bottom hem when I'm standing up in the back it ripples and I don't think that's because it's too big it's because the rib isn't tight enough so I would like to I'm going to completely redo the sleeves because they are too impractical. It's not like in my fluffy jumper where I can roll them back and they're fine. I have been rolling these back to make them a little bit more practical. But overall, they're just it's, it's just too much. And I think the sleeves really make it cross that line from oversized to it just looks too big. Doesn't look right. So even though like general size wise, I really like how big it is. I really like the loose fit. It offers something completely different to my wardrobe than my first sample is. It just doesn't look right. I'm not happy enough with it. So I'm gonna completely remove the sleeves and redo them, which won't take very long at all. I'll probably say a day per sleeve. Um, it's 5.5 millimeter needles. So it's like, no, 4.5 millimeter needles. So it's not like it's tiny or anything, but yeah, we just need to do some adjustment to the sleeves. And then the main problem is the button band and how poorly I, well, <laughs> I didn't do it poorly. I've executed it quite well. I just haven't picked up enough stitches basically and I realized this when I first started doing it it's a double knit button band that's applied afterwards and I realized this and I thought I could fudge it what have you, well, what have you made well hang on guys well mommy can't talk to you right now very nice why is this happening and what am I doing here <laughs> off you go so yes, the main issue is the button band. I realised that I hadn't picked up enough stitches and I thought the only issue was along here, along the V. So I ripped this back and then I went along and picked up extra stitches as I went, which is actually really, really handy because there's nothing more annoying than working double knit button band, realising you haven't picked up enough stitches and having to rip the whole thing back. So I've now found a little technique that avoids doing that and it worked really well. However, I should have also applied it <clears throat> to here, to this part of the button band, but I didn't want to rip back my buttonholes. <laughs> As you can hopefully see, my, my, the, the hem is moving upwards here. It's coming up. It's much lower in the back. Oh yeah, you can really see it there. Can you see how much higher it is at the front? And you might sometimes get that with an oversized garment in general that shouldn't be the case if it's size appropriate but it's massively massively um in, in, encouraged it's massively exacerbated <laughs> by the fact that my button band here is too short so it's pulling it all up and the only way to fix that is to go back and make the button band section here longer which i know exactly how to do and it's it's fine it all works out in the end it's going to mean that the the garment and the pattern is absolutely perfect which is great um it's just it's just more work to do isn't it but i've had a little bit of a break from this garment and i think i'm going to be ready to go back to working on it again i also miss wearing it i tried to knit it in a week because i wanted to wear it to a knitting social that i went to in bristol and i'm really glad i did because i felt really good in it obviously i hadn't fully understood the fit issues yet um, but I really enjoyed wearing it. I can't wear it done up because that really exacerbates the, the front lifting up thing. Also, <laughs> my buttons are too small for my button holes. So they just, it just pops out because there's nothing, there's not even any tension in the garment to hold them in. Um, so I'm gonna make my button holes smaller next time round. Um, but I have been wearing it open and I've been wearing it more of like a jacket than a cardigan which is lovely and I really like that and I want to be able to use this as a sample for the pattern so that you can get different vibes from it. I can say if you want it like this fitted go for this amount of these, if you want it oversized go for this amount of these but make sure you potentially shorten your sleeves and here is how you might want to pick up less stitches for your sleeve and here is how that kind of thing giving those modification that modification guidance is something that i really want to be able to do in general in my patterns and i kind of do anyway but it's something i'm leaning into much more recently so yeah um aiding with modifications is something i really want to lean into over the next year and into the future of my designing because why not like it's 
certainly how I started designing by taking patterns and changing them to meet my needs a bit more and modifying and experimenting and I want to enable people to do that there's no reason why you should have to stick to a pattern exactly if you want to change the looks and I, lo I love seeing modifications of my patterns I think it's great so there you go that's a Midland cardigan the yarn by the way is Pier Gint by Sanders Garn in the shade Ballet Slippers and I love it my goodness, I was so worried about the pink, but I absolutely love it. I feel really good when I wear it. I found ways in which I like to wear it with brown to get ice cream vibes, with dark jeans, with black, with a little black skirt. I basically like something dark to ground it. I, can't, I don't like doing like baby pink and light blue jeans. It's all a bit too sweet and girly for me, but I really like having this pink against something quite strong and masculine. I just I love it. I'm really, really pleased. And it's it's worn beautifully. I've got no pilling yet that I can tell. I've worn it a few times. And it's rustic, but for me, not itchy. I can wear it against the skin, no problem at all. It's crazy warm. <laughs> I can't com comment on how light or heavy it is because this is such a big garment, so it feels heavy anyway. Um, but it definitely doesn't feel as like heavy, I think, in general, as um, Peruvian Highland Wool, which is my normal go-to yarn for this kind of weight. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the Midland. I I'm trying my hardest to get through the next stage, which will be finishing writing the pattern, having it edited in the test call. Um, but life's been a little bit up and down, and I've just been kind of focusing on the products that I've got on the go already. I've got two two in testing at the moment, so that's kind of enough for me. <laughs> but yeah, we're coming to the end of the pimp on now, so then I'll be free to be working on this. So it is coming. It's probably going to be a late spring, early summer release, but why not? Why not? <laughs> release a wool cardigan in the summer I'm not holding it back any longer and I wore my other sample of this all all year all year long last year I live in the UK cardigans are still nece necessary in the summer oh I do love it it's just so cozy okay 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 <laughs> been watching a lot of Encanto so that's all my finished objects. <laughs> oh no, there's one more finished object. I finished a pair of socks. Woohoo! But I talked about them at length in my last podcast before Vlogmas. So if you want to go and see more about these fun neon speckled vanilla socks, you can do, but they're, they're nothing too exciting. <laughs> Other than the fact that I worked the second one whilst walking, which is a new thing in my life, which I'll go into more in the next episode because that's when I'm working on my hat that I'm making at the moment. But I'm going to save that for later. We've got enough to cover today already. So I'm going to go into whips. We've got quite an eclectic little pile over here, I'm going to tell you. So yeah, hold on, hold on to your potatoes. So first up, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> it's so random. It's so random. But there's a very clear purpose behind it and it's so fun. <laughs> I decided last week to make my husband a little something for Valentine's Day. I suddenly realised it was going to be Valentine's and I was like, oh, what should I do? I always struggle with Valentine's because it's not something that we go mad for at all, but I don't like to not commemorate the moment like I expect a bunch of flowers that's fine for me we don't go out or anything we just have a normal tea like but I like to do a little something and I wanted to make this for my husband for Christmas but I ran out of time and then I suddenly remembered it the other day so lo and behold something you will have never seen anywhere else in your life because it's so unbelievably random but here we have a Transformers hot water bottle cover <laughs> husband loves Transformers, has done ever since he was a child. He likes the new movies but for him it's all about like the original cartoon and the actual action figures themselves. He's got a collection of like really fancy ones. I don't know, I don't get it. But I thought, let why not? Let's just let's just make him a Transformers hot water bottle cover because he keeps pinching mine. At the end of last year I released the Maxine hot water bottle cover pattern and this is basically that. It's exactly the same, all the same stitch counts, everything like that. I just made a different colour work chart for it. I googled um, Autobot pixel art and this exact thing came up. You can literally this in like a little grid pattern you can just get off Google easy peasy and I just pulled up my knitting chart app and kind of like 
drew it in there like copied it and then basically made a grid the exact size of my hot water bottle and then just did some little the little bit here this isn't in the original Maxine but like this is and just played about with it till it looked right and my goodness oh I gave myself a job with this because there is a lot of three color color work in this kind of it's not like when you've got three different colors working all the way through it's basically the Autobots so you've got the white on the outside and then this is two color and then you've got just the white here and then two color and just the white and it's the same pretty much all the way through. So I did have to do quite a bit of yarn management. I did catch floats kind of like halfway through the face but I tried not to catch floats here in the middle just because all of these dark colors behind the white really show through. I have so to say, this is my beginning round, I did catch a float here as well because otherwise there would have been some quite long floats kind of going through the hot water bottle which might have made it different difficult to get the hot water bottle into but this is all rustic yarn so even though we've got some very long floats in the back it shouldn't matter in the long run I'll flip inside out for you so you can see um, my white is Phil Kalana Saga which is what I used for my original um, hot water bottle covers as well it's a beautiful yarn it's lovely held double it's lamb's wool it's super soft it's rustic but not itchy and it's just lovely for color work so you can see we've, we've got some long old floats here but because everything is rustic and toothy it all just sticks together especially when it's in a hot water bottle these will all felt and become like one plain fabric which is great because you get a sturdy hot water bottle cover that's extra warm and you don't have to worry about catching massive floats all the time uh, the other ones are the red is also phil kalana saga the black is um isiga alpaca one held quadruple because <laughs> it's the only black yarn i had <laughs> it's like a lace weight yarn but it worked <laughs> <laughs> why not and then the blues are woolly mammoth fibers mini skeins from my advent calendar from two years ago and i actually had a little bit of a problem with one of these <laughs> the darker blue which i'm pretty sure is dyed with indigo um it got all over my hands and i didn't realize and you can actually see along the bottom of the cover i think you can see it's slightly blue there's like a blue line here and that's from where I had wound the blue yarn up. It had gone all over my hands but I hadn't even realised. I started knitting with a white yarn and it all kind of rubbed off along here. And then I realised so I went and washed my hands. Not a problem. It all came off straight away and continued. But yeah, I think where I'm working the blue and the white together, the blue does kind of has rubbed off on the white around it i have steam blocked this i've not wet blocked it just given it a little steam block it doesn't need more than that just to even out the color work and then i put it whilst it was still damp in the hot water bottle and put a little bit of hot water in the hot water not low just so it was still flat so that your hot water bottle cover like blocks to the perfect size um i did that at that point just because i was a little bit worried about my tension my color work was quite tight but it all worked out in the end and i thought i'm gonna block it now before i continue and do all this because if it is too small at least i'm not ripping back all of this just this and it was absolutely fine i'm actually really pleased i think my tension is great there's one spot where i have lost my black edge stitches there you can kind of only see like one leg and it looks a bit janky so i am going to go in and just duplicate stitch here just to make that edge a little bit more obvious but overall you don't really get it do you You can't really see it doesn't really matter so i just need to finish off the decreases and do the neck which i'm going to do today and tomorrow and then it will be ready to give on valentine's day um, i have had a few people say are you going to release this version the answer is no um, <laughs> it's too niche it's not my intellectual property so i don't want to cause myself any trouble there and it's not my aesthetic either i don't really want it on my Ravelry page um however i am gonna see if i can get my chart and put it up on my patreon for free like on a, on a page that anyone can see you don't need to sign up you don't need to pay for it you don't need to be a member but I'm hoping I can do it that way and you can download the chart that I've made from there. You will need the Maxine hot water bottle cover um, pattern. Or if you're happy to wing it, there are also free patterns out there that you might be able to have to adjust this stitch count for a little bit too. But I'm going to see if I can put it up 
somewhere on the internet for you guys to download for free. I will try. I don't want to put it on Ravelry as a free pattern because I don't want it in my Ravelry store. Um, but I'm going to try on Patreon and see see where we get. <laughs> so if, if, if you want to make a Transformers hot water bottle cover, <laughs> there you go. But again, you can just download this pixel art. It's easy. If you ever want to do colour work anything, just search pixel art and you'll find it because people use this kind of thing for like hammer beads and all that kind of stuff so there you go that's my random project I really really hope he likes it <laughs> and moving on I'm now going to show you my um biggest whip and it's companion whip and then I'm going to end on my new whip which I haven't actually shown anyone anywhere apart from a few friends so we're going to end on, on a little bit of an, of an exclusive for those of you who stick to the end so if you are familiar with my work you will know that last year I released the Stella quilt cushion I don't have one in here right now but it is a cushion cover that is inspired by traditional quilting designs and I did it in garter stitch using similar methods to my sweet shop blanket though I did have to change them and introduce a few new ones in order to make this work and since I released it I've heard the word blanket 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 <laughs> ever since I first showed it so last year I did write the blanket pattern I had it edited and it has now gone to preview knit it's not a full test knit I'm not expecting anyone to knit a whole blanket no one needs to give feedback unless they don't want to it's just kind of there to make sure that it works and I think I've got about 20 people knitting it maybe left 15 15 people making it I think um and I am slowly working on my sample <laughs> this is going to be a massive massive blanket and I have enlisted my sample knitter to help me along with it a little bit and do a few motifs for me but I'm doing most of them myself and it was a bit of a slog at first but I've really gotten back into a rhythm with it and I'm enjoying it at the moment and another reason I'm enjoying it is because I've made a little companion project which I'm going to show you in a minute but I have finished three of 12 motifs my blanket is going to be 12 motifs big i i would like it to be 15 but for the sake of getting the pattern out before 2027 <laughs> i'm going to go a little bit smaller i think and just like the sweet shop you can add on to this the edges are the same so it's a nice super smooth edge so that you can just finish whenever you want but then add on to it in the future if you wanted to um however i do think i would quite like to add a border onto this and in the pattern there are a couple of suggestions for borders with links to tutorials and stuff but without further ado i've got three panels the first one i did was my blue one and this is motif two there are two motifs in the um quilt in the cushion and the blanket so this is technically motif two because this is the second one I did and you can see it's this beautiful star made up of eight different sections but each each section is like two triangles so you could do it like this a different color each one I've seen people do these for the cushion with all just two different colors alternating which looks wonderful I've seen people do it where every single individual triangle is different and I'm going to be doing one of those as well um, but there you go that's motif two that's a blue one this is motif one in pink and every single triangle is a different colour. I say it's pink, it's pink and red, it's all my dark pinks. I've got a bag of light pink scraps and this is my bag of dark and red kind of colours as you see. And this is like, a, um, I've been told it's an Ohio star, I've been told it's a crystal star. I've avoided using official quilting methods because I know someone's going to tell me I'm wrong at some point. So for me this is just motif one. <laughs> there you go and actually I recently saw someone who's kind of elaborated on the Stella um, cushion and they're doing it slightly differently but they've basically taken this motif and they've inverted these two colours so the inside is white and this is a colour and it's made such such a cool effect a cool look but using the exact same construction so I think for my next one I'm going to do that and I'll include that in the pattern obviously nothing needs to change you just need to invert these two and it's exactly the same but yeah I think I'm going to do that for my next one so you can actually get two different looks from one motif with this which is super exciting so that's my pink one and then I recently finished my yellow one but I'm quickly going to change my battery 
okay back in the room so yes here's the yellow one it is technically this way round from the way that I constructed it and I'm not 100% happy with this one because I think these two colours are too similar and it it's like this just needed to be darker and it has annoyed me a little bit however because of the way I constructed it to change these I would have to rip back all of this if this was just the top row that I'd added in we'd be fine but no it's this way around so I'd have to basically redo it which I'm not going to do and also in the grand scheme of things it is not going to matter. This is going to be a massive blanket with loads of different coloured motifs in it. So it, it won't matter. The amount of time I spent whilst I was making my sweet shop blanket trying to decide what colour to go next to which and would that look okay? Would that look bad? Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm trying not to sweat the small stuff with this one. But yeah, I was a little bit disappointed by that one. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So, so far I have been aiming to do a full motif a week. Like I said, we're doing 12 motifs all together. My test knit, my someone is doing two, possibly three, but let's call it two, so 10, three down, I've got seven to go. Um, so I could be done in less than two months. However, I think it's a little unrealistic to do a whole motif in a week. Although to be fair, I did make this entire jumper and this motif in one week. Plus, working on other little bits and pieces here and there. <laughs> so it is possible if I just put my mind to it. But the main thing was, I just got a little bit bored of the of the one colour. So I think moving forward, I'm going to change my goal a little bit to 14 squares a week, which is two a day. Now, that might be three or four in one day and zero in another day. That's fine. Or, you know, we'll see. That's just the rough goal. Two a day, I think, feels a little bit more achievable. I really like working on it in the evening when I'm tired, when I've had enough, when I just want something mindless and something repetitive. It's great evening knitting. But I also want to experience all the different colours, not just one colour at a time. And one, that's just because of just general motivation. And two, because of its little partner project. I was having a bit of a low day a week or two ago. I was just in my bed, scrolling, not doing anything, just feeling quite blur. And I came across a reel of a crochet blanket. I came across a, co a crochet blanket and I saw it and I was like, oh, that looks so nice. That looks so lovely. I'm gonna cast one on right away. <laughs> the blanket I'm referring to is one by Emma C Makes. She's on Instagram, she's also here on YouTube and she does crochet and knitting. And it was a reel of her making this blanket and she's got a full video tutorial on YouTube on how to make it. Crochet wise, it's really simple. I would never consider myself a crocheter. I can crochet. My mum and my sister are like crochet, like, what's the word? They're like masters, masters of crochet. They make incredible things. They know exactly what they're doing. I'm like the most novice of novice, but I understand it and I can physically do it. Um, but I've, ne I've never really drawn to crochet and I think one of the reasons I'm not particularly drawn to crochet is I don't like holy things. I don't like things with holes in. I don't really knit lace. I don't like, I find fabric with holes in quite triggering in a sensory way. I don't like the fact that I can feel the air through the holes but I'm also covered. It's just too much for me. So therefore crochet isn't really my kind of thing. This has no holes <laughs> and it kind of looks like knitting. So I will link the video down below because I'm not going to explain to you how I did this because I don't know what I'm talking about and Emma does such a brilliant job that even I, a complete novice, could understand. So I'm just going to link the video below. Um, but she was making this beautiful scrappy blanket and she was using quite similar neutral pastel-y colours and her colour placement was a lot more thought out, it was more stripey, whereas I've just gone absolutely wild in the aisles. I grabbed my magic knot ball that was growing and I just went for it. I just started and then I spent two days and two nights absolutely obsessed with this. Here she is. It is the scrappiest blanket you've ever seen in your life. It's a corner to corner. And it's, I think it's meant to be like seed stitch or moss stitch in that you kind of got that knit one, purl one kind of look. 
but there's no purling because it's just crochet. It's basically like a, a double crochet, English terms, single crochet, American terms, I think. And then a chain, and then you crochet into the chain space on the next row and you increase at the end and it's really simple. Um, but it just creates this lovely fabric. It's quite a firm fabric. It is um, fingering weight yarn and I'm using a three millimeter hook just because that's what I had. She does say if you want like a drapey fabric to go up a couple of need uh, needle sizes, hook sizes, sorry. Um, so if I had a 3.5, I would have gone for 3.5, but I'm happy with the fabric as it is. Um, I think it'll be even nicer once I give it a little steam block, but I'm just gonna keep going. What, it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy. Every time I look at it, I, all I think is Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat, which I love, because I was in that musical as a child and I freaking loved it. It's one of my favorites. So all I hear is like, oh, he love this gold American. It, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, sure, maybe. <laughs> but what I also particularly like about this is it's like, like a little reminder of my projects. As you can see, this is all the leftovers from my shawl. And at first I was like, oh, that corner is really thick and just like a few colors. And then we've got this crazy color, but I'm not overthinking it. This is literally just to get rid of scraps. And then we had some like random leftover bits and all of this is the leftovers from my sweet shop into a magic knot ball and then some more random ones. And now this is Stella Blanket. So this is what another reason why I want to hop between colors rather than just doing one single motif in a single color. I'm still doing single color motifs, but I'm gonna be working on lots of different motifs at once. And that's because I didn't wanna end up with like a big chunk of yellow, big chunk of blue, big chunk of pink. I wanted to mix it up a little bit more. And you can see here I was, this was like my leftover scraps from my blue and I was working on the pink at the same time, so it's mainly blue and pink. And then we've got a big chunky yellow. I didn't get many scraps from my yellow because I don't know. I just, I'm basically anything under four grams is going into this. Some of them over four, around four, and obviously as it gets wider, those four grams will make less of a chunky stripe. So I might be able to go up to like five grams, but because of how my cellar blanket is constructed, if it's over four grams, I can use it but if it's under four grams, I can't use it. So that's where we're going now. You can see we've got one tiny little, little strip of blue from a blue triangle I started yesterday. So this is basically my motivation because every time I get a scrap left over from this, I get to put it into this. <laughs> so this is like my little, my little goal and it definitely worked. It definitely worked with the yellow because I did find that one a little bit of a slob slob, slog, because yellow isn't my favorite color, neither is blue, um, but we will, we'll get there, we will do it. So in the next few months, the Stella quilt blanket will be released. There is also a little something extra special coming with the blanket um, pattern as well, but I'm not ready to reveal that just yet, because I've got some work to do, but yeah, watch this space, it's developed. <laughs> So that's my main, that's my main whip now. That's what I'm working on most. And then I have one final whip, which I hyper-focused on for about two days. And then I've set aside for a little while, but I'm still very much enjoying it, still intend to work on it. And I think I might release it as a pattern, but we'll see. I'm not too sure yet. So I received a Christmas present at Christmas from somebody who messaged me saying, I'd love to send you this product that I make just as a gift, no pressure, no, you don't need to share or anything like that. I would just like to send it to you. And it was something I was actually really interested in. And I'm gonna share it with you, but I, in an episode where I can go into it in more detail, I don't think I had the time in this one. I also need to actually use it first. <laughs> um, but she also sent me some yarn, which I didn't know she was gonna do and I was absolutely blown away by it. And I haven't got the two other colors with me. Bear with. How he loved his coat of many colors. It was red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and chocolate and brown and orange and I can't remember all the colors. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely proves I was in it, wasn't it? I was the narrator. Lead roll. <laughs> anyway. I got sent this yarn and I was absolutely blown away by it. It's so beautiful and I ummed and ahed for a long time what to do with this yarn, how to make the most of every single meter, 
how to use it all in one project. And I was like, we could go stripey, we could do this, we could do that. And then I was at the knitting social with some friends and I had an idea. And then I cast it on when I got back and it worked really, really well. So without further ado, I have a new shawl on the go and it's garter stitch. Oh my goodness, it's everything garter stitch. <laughs> Pretty much everything apart from this, my hot water bottle cover and my crochet is in garter stitch. I really am having a garter stitch phase at the moment. I just can't get enough of it. Um, so yes, I have a new garter stitch shawl on the go and here she is. Look at this. Isn't this a bit of fun now? <laughs> so we are going for that long, long, skinny kind of Sophie scarf shape, basically. Although I don't want to call it that because the Sophie shawl and scarf was not the first of these designs. <laughs> it might be the first that most people see, but this kind of thing has been around for a long time. Um, but this is going to be more of a kite shape, like an elongated kite shape. I think the Sophie shawl only increases on one side. This is increasing on both sides at different rates. This is DK weight and Obviously, as you can see, we've got some intarsia on the go. Look, it's so beautiful. At first, I didn't think I could do intarsia in garter stitch, but I did some YouTube research and found a couple of tutorials, and turns out it's even better than stockinette intarsia. When you have stockinette intarsia on the wrong side, you kind of have like a, a, a twist going up the back of your yarns where you twist them together. Whereas in garter stitch, it's literally you just, you just can't see. It's amazing. I can't get over it. It's so beautiful. Look at it. It's so crisp and clean and amazing. I love it. So the plan is, my uh, friend sent me three balls of Clinton Hill Cashmere. The bespoke DK 50 gram balls. Honestly, I'm not worthy, but I'm so happy because <laughs> it's, it's stunning. It's such, I mean, of course it's cashmere for God's sake. It's beautiful. And she sent me the most wonderful colors. They're so me. They're like, this is exactly what I would choose. They're so lovely. We've got this gray kind of oatmeal. In some lights it's gray, some lights it's oatmeal. Like that real grayish color that I love. Beautiful camel color and this lovely only just pink. It's quite a cool pink. My Midland is a warm pink. This is definitely cool. But all together, all together <laughs> they give that Neapolitan ice cream vibes, which is gonna be the name of this podcast, obviously. <laughs> Um, just beautiful, love them together. However, I was struggling to find something that would work with just these three colours. I actually started off doing almost like a stripy garter, really long crescent shape, but it just wasn't really working and the yarn management was faffy and it just didn't feel very me. I didn't want stripes. I was like, stripes is too obvious here. How can, how can we... And the idea eventually came. So we're going for a kite shape elongated diamond and when I've run out of the first one of these I'm going to change colours. This by the way, what is this colour you're asking? I happen to have a ball of um, Cardiff Cashmere Classic. I bought it for a swatch for an idea that's probably going to come at some point later in the year. So this is the Cardiff Cashmere Classic which is yardage wise half the weight of this. So we were talking earlier about holding fingering double to get DK, etc. This DK, this I've held double. It has created a slightly thicker fabric, but remember, it's a shawl. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and overall, it's fine. It's not like this side is like bigger than this side. It just feels a little denser, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. And the colors together, the, it just works so perfectly. I did have to end up ordering another ball of this, obviously, because I'm holding it double. And these are 25 gram balls. These are 50 gram balls. But we're going to have the camel over here as kind of like an opposite type thing. And we're going to have the pink here. So it's kind of going to be like Harley Quinn kite vibes. I just think it's going to be so fun to wear. Like when you wrap it round, you're just going to get like the different colours, but it's not stripey. I just, yeah, I think it'd be really fun. And it's so satisfying to work on. Now I've got the hang of my yarn management, so I'm not getting in a tangle every time I do my intarsia bit. It's actually really satisfying. I weighed all my yarns 
first and found out which one was the lightest and therefore had the least yardage, which was this one. So I'll start with this one and then I base my colours on it. Because I know if this is the smallest, then I've definitely got enough of the rest to complete the shawl. So there you go, that's that one. And yeah, I've not done too much on this recently just because I was kind of sidetracked by this and then the water bottle cover for my husband. But now this is done and once that is done, then these are gonna be my main whips. This is probably gonna be like my work knitting and this is gonna be like my evening knitting, even though they are both kind of work knitting. Um, and then I will be casting on a jumper soon as well. So there you go, that's my new little shawl guy. Isn't he fun? What do you think? I have not yet decided whether I'm gonna go forward with this as a pattern, maybe, maybe not. It would be really good for like scraps and <laughs> leftover skeins, hand spun yarn. I've got like 60 grams of one color that I am um, like already bored of spinning because it's just like a single color, but it's beautiful yarn and I wanna use it. So I could totally make this. You know, there's no limit to the size that you could do. I'm only restricted by the amount of yarn that I've got. You could do a much bigger one. You could do it at any gauge. It's like one of those. I just, I'm all about the garter stitch and the scrappy projects. That's that's where my little designing heart is at the moment. Just using up those little bits, using up those scraps, having fun with your stash. Yeah, that's where I am. So maybe I will go forward with this once the pin pom is done. Because we only need one garter shawl at a time, right? So there you go. No name, but it would be nice to be like, I don't know, kite shawl, flyer kite shawl, Harley Quinn shawl, I don't know. Most names have already been taken, so that'll take some research. So let me know what you think about that. I'm a little bit unsure about it. I think that's probably why I haven't sh shared it yet, because I'm a little bit like, ee, maybe it will just be for me. I don't know, we'll see. But there we go. <laughs> we made it through. My coffee is cold. But we did it. We survived. Hopefully the sound is all right. <laughs> Hopefully the light is all right. And we only had a few interruptions. It wasn't too bad, was it? Um, I'm not gonna do big loads of like live chat and spiel at the end, because I feel like this is a very long one anyway. And I'm probably gonna be coming back with another podcast quite soon. Um, we're gonna be, probably when we've got the pin pong released, because obviously I like to let you guys know that it's been released, share you a discount code, all that kind of thing. So you're probably gonna see me again quite soon. Moving forward, I always like to do like what, what, what's coming up from me section at the end of the videos, just for those of you who are still here. We're still going strong over on Patreon. We're doing two videos a month over there. That's next on my list for filming. And here on YouTube, I think the next video is probably gonna be another podcast. Um, thank you for all the love on the Midland Cardigan video. I was really nervous to publish that. I. I actually uploaded it and kept it pub, uh, private for like five days because I was a little bit worried it was going to be really boring. <laughs> and I'm sure there are people out there who thought, this is boring, turn off. Thank you to those people for not feeling like you had to share your opinion. <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but I was really surprised about how many of you enjoyed it. So based on that, I might do a few more like close up product videos. Um, my next garment cast on is going to be my John Arben sweater that again was a pattern from last year. However, I had to take a design break and kind of work on my process and stuff, which is why we're back with the Midland. And then next on the list is the John Arben sweater, which I've already made a sample of, but I haven't actually written anything. I've done a rough grade, so there's quite a lot of process in there. So I might take you along with me for that one, which will be fun. But then, I mean, we're moving, we're moving through to spring summer now. I am not a summer garment knitter. I have tried but my heart is just not in it. I don't like wearing knitted summer garments. <laughs> I've got my summer souffle, which I actually wore quite a lot last year, but in those cooler days, kind of late spring, early autumn, colder summer day, I wore it a lot to like knitting yarny events. I do wear that a lot and I might make myself another one one day in a different colour, but overall, in order to have summer patterns out as a designer, you need to be working on them now, and that's the last thing I wanna do. Also, I've got two young kids, as you might have figured out, and so the summer for me is mum mode. I've got those kids at home with me for six weeks, 
and I do have some childcare, but that's my priority and that's the way it should be. It's a lot like for them having school. So to have a nice big break from it and to spend some time with me, that's where I want to be focusing my energy over, over summer, not um, writing patterns for garments that I don't want to wear. <laughs> so I'm going to be winding down on the whole design front. I have got some exi exciting projects booked in for autumn already so i'm gonna have stuff to work on over summer but just a little step back which is what i did last year for my mental health but this year i want to do it intentionally um so i'm gonna be working and designing and stuff but then yeah a little bit of a chill out in summer but what that usually means is we up things on the content side last year i did vlogmas in july for the first time which is a little something that i created and had so much fun doing so i am currently planning on doing vlogmas in july again it's nice because it's the last little bit of the summer of the school term so i do get quite a lot of time to myself and then we get <clears throat> like the first little bit of the summer holidays we get penny's birthday it's quite a nice time to vlog <clears throat> so i am planning on doing that but yeah overall you can just expect the normal from me over the next few months and i'm so happy to be here i'm i'm in a really good place at the moment i think when it comes to work i appointed an accountant recently i just got I just, just couldn't do it on my own. It was just too much. It was causing me too much stress. So I've appointed an accountant, which is really exciting. Really feel like a grown up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm in a good place with my work, with my mental health, with my content creation and everything. So yeah, you can expect much more from me over the next few months. But with that, I'm going to wind it up. I'm going to get back to this thing because the deadline approaches. I'm gonna go and see how much the children have destroyed the living room. <laughs> and I will catch up with you again next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to make use of the 20K discount code and I will see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye.